And on top of that, like what they don't tell you is um, you need to keep your average in order to keep your scholarship. And it's not even a fully you know, paid scholarship. That's that guy. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time, man. Yeah, a long time. You good. You ready for good. this? Yep. Yo, you look good, bro. I'm trying to be like you, bro. I'm trying to be like you, bro. Ski. What shoes are those, bro? These are the uh, gold toes. These are my favorite, actually. That's what you're on now? Yeah. That's what you're on. You're a Nike man? Uh, yeah, I'm a Nike guy. I like Jordans, but I'm a LeBron guy. Craig Jr., Jr., yes, brother, thank you for sitting down with me on the first episode of Tuition Talks. Appreciate you being here. How's your offseason been? Uh, it's been good. Uh, a little different from the uh, from my other off-seasons. Um, you know, I took a trip back home. Yeah. It's been very, uh, like, all over the place. All over the place. Exactly, yeah. So, yo, you talk about taking a trip back home. Let's start from the beginning, all right? You came to Canada from Guyana at a very young age. All right, so how old were you when you first came here? And where'd you guys first land? <laughs> I came here when I was uh, 10 years old. 10 years old? Yeah, 10. And who'd you come with? Came with my dad. He's a barber, so he, you know, f for him it was pretty easy to kind of like find a barber shop and just yeah. like start working and whatnot. So you always have that lineup growing up, fresh haircut or what? Yep. Yeah. So I didn't really actually pay for uh, a haircut until I went to university. You didn't have to pay for a haircut all the way up until you got to uni? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's blessed. That's blessed. It was a blessing, yeah. <laughs> now, because now you got guys charging, charging you like $40 for a haircut. Yeah. So uh, we moved to uh, Ottawa in the west side of Ottawa, Canada. What was the entire culture shock like for you in terms of just adjusting to a new country? I feel like it was, uh, you know, it was like discovering like a, like a new world in a sense, you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, the things we, uh, we have in Canada, uh, we just don't have it back home. Obviously the weather is totally different and whatnot, but just seeing the different types of uh, people in Canada, right? So it was, just, it was just so many things that were just like new to me and to what you would expect moving from, uh, from a different country, especially like a third world country. So let's talk about football, all right? At what age did you start playing football? What drew you to the sport? So I started um, with touch football in grade eight. I just said, you know, let me just give it a try. End up, you know, liking just the run and the catching and really get to hit. And then one of my new friends that I met, he played uh, community football and he's like, dude, you know, you're fast, you know, I saw you play touch football. You should, you know, come out and try out. Ever since then, you know, I just kept playing. <laughs> okay, so football is a pretty expensive sport. Did the actual cost to play ever really stand out to you? Was that ever a barrier? Was that everything that you ever really thought about? Maybe it was, but my dad never really, you know, made it seem um, like, it, like he had a, a troubles paying for it. It was just something like I think you want as a, as a child, you know, not to know what your parents are going through. I was able to kind of just live without having to worry about clothes or, you know, if we have enough money to sign me up for football or whatnot, you know, like I was very blessed, uh, to, you know, to have my dad just make me just focus on, you know, playing football or just being a student and, you know, doing those things that, you know, a child should, you know, be able to do without, without having to worry about anything else. Uh, I resonate with that so much. My mom did the same thing, right? Exactly. Whatever financial struggles there were, cover it up. Yeah. Son doesn't need to know about it, right? Let them live, let them get their education. Coming out of high school, you committed to Laurier. Yeah. Laurier's in Waterloo, which is a long way away from Ottawa. Talk to me. What made you commit to Wilfrid Laurier University? The head coach at that time was Michael Falls. He still is the head coach. Yeah, Michael Falls. Yeah. Um, honestly, he he saw my potential and what I can be. Yeah. You know, he believed in me, and at that time, uh, schooling was a little um, was a little hard hard for me. He was on me every single day, making sure I was doing my work and making sure you know I had my things in order in order to be accepted into uh, to Laurier because you know obviously growing up I was you know just playing football you know didn't really think about, you know, you need school in order to, you know, to be, to play football. Yeah. For someone to, you know, to put in that much effort into making sure, you know, I got those little things that I need in order to, you know, play football at the next level, that's someone that I want to play for. And, uh, you know, we made it happen and, you know, I don't regret, I don't regret it at all. Let's talk a little bit about the experience of being a youth sports athlete, okay? Because it often goes untalked about, but in youth sports, there aren't many full scholarships. Not right? at all, yeah. You have athletes trying to cover a portion of their tuition. You have athletes trying to cover their own housing, um, purchase their own food, books, tutors, all that stuff. It's an entire financial experience that doesn't get talked about until you're actually put in that position at the age of 18, 17. So how did you handle all those responsibilities at such a young age? I just took it a day at a time and a week at a time and a month at a time. and 
obviously it's not easy being a student athlete in Canada. You, you know that, you know what I mean? You played football at Waterloo. You know, you have things like OSAP to help you out, but all, that's also, you're putting yourself into so much like debt that, you know, when you, you're, when you are out of university, you know, you got to pay back a $40,000 loan. And that's not easy, especially, okay, what if football doesn't work out? You're working a nine to five, making, I don't know, your salary is maybe 50, 50, 60,000 a year. You got to live, you got to eat. Um, prices are going up. And on top of that, you got to worry about p making those OSAP bills. And on top of that, like what they don't tell you is um, you need to keep your average in order to keep your scholarship. And it's not even a fully you know, paid scholarship. You might get, I don't know, a few thousand. You know, every, obviously every, um, everything helps. But at the same time, <laughs> you know, I don't know how you know most people um, get through being a, being an athlete in in Canada because being a student itself is hard, but now being a student athlete, it's just that much harder. I'm huge on scholarships. Yeah. I always think yeah. that every single student athlete in Canada should be in contention for getting a full scholarship. Okay, when did you first find out that in the OUA you can't get a full scholarship, and what was your reaction to that? I think grade 11, grade 12, when I was actually you know trying to now trying to play yeah, football at the next level. You know, we're talking, obviously we hear about, you know, full scholarships in the States and all that. And then I'm like, okay, so do we get that in Canada? And then, you know, I just, you know, ask around, ask your questions, whatever. And you find out like, wow, like you really don't. And it's crazy because in order to get a scholarship over here, you need like an 80 average coming out of uh, high school. And like at that time, I, you know, I was trying to, I was trying to get like a 65, 70 average to get accepted into university. I'm like, how is that possible for me now? And um, I never ended up actually getting a scholarship, to be honest with you. So I went four years without getting a scholarship. What? Yeah. You went four years at Laurier without getting a scholarship. That's crazy. Yo. So one of the greatest players in Laurier football history, in OUA football history, U sports football history, didn't even get their scholarship when they were in school. Nope. And I think that goes to show how much that academic aspect really affects student athletes. Because the reality is, you and I both know this, it's a full-time job to be a student athlete, 100%. right? You're putting in 30 hours a week, 40 hours a week, watching film, working out the lifestyle. Yeah. It's hard to maintain your grades. You know, it's like Monday, to, like Monday to Friday, or even Monday to Saturday. Like you're waking up at 6 a.m. You know, you, like you got practice at 4 p.m. And then in between that time, like you got your lifts, and then you got to go to, you know, go to your classes, and then you got practice from 4 to 8, and then you know you got to do your, you know, schoolwork and whatever. That's a full days of work. You know what I mean? And it's it's hard, you know. Uh, at, an, at the end of the day, like student athletes were human, you know what I mean? And, and the fact that you're, you're asking, you know, these athletes who are, you know, doing so much work within that week to, you know, get a certain um, grade average just to receive a little bit of money, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? In a order to, exactly, yeah. that's the word, just a little bit, you know what I mean? It's different if you're, okay, you do that much work and, you, you know, your whole uh, tuition is paid for. That's, yeah. that's a whole different story, but, you know, you're doing that much uh, just, you know, for a little bit of money to help you out, you know, because you're still going to be in debt at the end of the day. You talk about that, which leads to the next kind of part, right? I'm going to talk about after your university career. Let's talk about you as a pro <laughs> here in Toronto, yeah. because you have the privilege of being one of the highest paid receivers in the league, first off. Appreciate you, man. Collect that bag, collect that <laughs> bag, right? Mm -hmm. But obviously, you weren't always one of the highest paid players in the league. Can you talk to me how your approach to finances differs now as one of the highest paid players in the league compared to when you first came into the league on that rookie deal which is significantly less money you know obviously new contract really doesn't really change much and it doesn't it change much and it shouldn't right okay first got drafted by toronto you know it's, it's you know it's a blessing to uh you know to still be here and you know for you know toronto giving me this opportunity you know to fulfill my passion obviously like you said on a rookie deal you don't really you're not really making much but everybody has to go through that right i found out i was having you know a kid at that time and you know obviously like I said we were talking before you know you go into this massive debt of you know student loans right I wished my first year you know I could have you know paid back some of my loans or you know help myself you know be better financially I had to do those uh, things to prepare to have a kid my daughter was born uh, January 2020 it's so right before COVID hit and now I got to work two jobs bro just so that you know me my girlfriend and my daughter like will be all right i'll always be better because at the end of the day like i said success doesn't rest so i won't rest for you that was a make it or break a year make yeah it break it you made it bro so that's what's up that's appreciate what's up. you so we're gonna switch gears now we're gonna move to our next segment i had to call two cents all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna ask you a series of 
short questions and you're just gonna give short, quick answers. You ready? Yeah. What's more stressful, lending money or borrowing money? For me personally, lending, just because I'm not the person to be like, hey, I just lent you some money, you know, when can I have it back? You know what I mean? I yeah. just, you know, allow it. Next question, treat yourself or treat your friends? Treat my family just because I'll always put my myself second. So I'll always take care of uh, my family and I'm a family uh, first type of guy. So I'll always treat my family before I treat myself. Yeah, I knew that answer was coming. <laughs> answer was coming. <laughs> okay, this might be a little bit of a longer answer. Yeah. What's one resource that you think all student athletes should know about? That's something we need more of. I feel like we just need more resources because there's just not enough to help us su succeed, especially being a student athlete here in Canada. If the resources do exist, someone needs to tell these athletes about it. That too. Because there are times where these resources exist, but no one knows about it until long after you graduated. Exactly. And then you hear about it through the grapevine. What's one thing that you'd stock up on if you knew it was never going to be sold again? <laughs> See how his eyes lit up? Eyes lit up. I'm about to surprise you, but one thing, gotta be bubble tea. Gotta be bubble tea for me. Bro, I have that at least three, four times a week. You know, like with tapioca and like, okay. you can either do like the milk tea or you can do like a strawberry, like uh, like milkshake or like just strawberry slush or like whatever it is. It's got like everything you need, bubble tea's got. Okay, what's your go-to bubble tea order? It's like a peach uh, green tea. All right, my go-to bubble tea order. Uh, large taro milk tea, no ice, no sugar, with tapioca. Yeah, I love the tapioca, that's the best part of it. That's the best part, that's yeah. the best part. Yeah, but not too much. I love it, I, I got extra. Really? Yes. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Describe your financial persona in one word. Yeah, honestly, before it was like YOLO, but <laughs> I'm just joking. But honestly, I'm still learning at this point and that's something I like, I'll always be, so I can't really give you one word. Um, because, you know, obviously we know life's about growth and experiences and whatnot. So every single day, every single year, I'm, I'm, I'm learning more and more about myself. Toronto, Waterloo, Ottawa. What's the easiest city to save money in? Definitely not Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so Toronto's out of that question. I'd say Ottawa, for me personally, um, just because I got family there, don't have to eat out as much. Um, just those little things that'll help you save I agree with you, Toronto. I yeah, agree. no, hell no. Toronto's, out, between, Toronto's yeah. out of here. This is our last round. It's called U Sports Two Cents. You already know I can't have you sitting down here without asking you some <laughs> U Sports specific questions. So I have to ask, all right? all right? During your time at Laurier, who was the hardest DB you ever went up against? If I had to choose one, I gotta go with Robbie Yoakum. I think his name out of McMaster, number two, he always gave me a good battle. Who's one U Sports receiver that you didn't play with? during your time at Laurier, whose game you always respected. I gotta give a lot of props to uh, Javel Pinto, because he was cold. Toronto he is guy. cold, Toronto he guy. is a Toronto guy. Uh, Kayon. Julian Grant. Yep, out of St. Effects, he was super cold too. And then Chris Usikusi was good as well. So we got Travel Pinto, Chris Usikusi, Kayon. Oh, Julian Grant. I can't forget about Tarnowski. <laughs> can't forget about him, he was cold. And, and Gordon Lamb too. Like I said, there's just so many good ones and you know, I respect everybody's game. So outside of University Stadium, what was your favorite place to play while you were at Laurier? The Queen Stadium. Richardson? Yes, that's beautiful. The new one? Played there in 2018. They're gonna be having the next two Vanier Cups there at Richardson. That's good. So I better see you there. If I'm invited. <laughs> Bro, I'm there. So you already know if I'm there, you're invited. And if I'm invited, then I'll be there okay. for sure. Question, have you been keeping up with Laurier? Yes. What are your thoughts on the roster that they had last year? It's gonna be similar coming in this year. What are your thoughts on that team that they have right now? Honestly, I think they were just, uh, they were young. Yeah. So it kind of reminded um, reminded me of our 2015 year. We had a, like a, yacht, a lot of like young ballers, you feel me? That just needed a year, just, you know, getting their feet wet and just like having a feel for the game. And I think this year it's gonna, it's gonna be good because the defense is always good. Uh, we got a few guys coming back. Secondary will be good, and you know, obviously we're well coached. So um, I think it will be very dangerous uh, this upcoming year. Final question: Who you got winning the Vanier Cup in 2023? I hope Laurier, but uh, if they don't win it, then I'm gonna stay in the OUA. I gotta go Western. <laughs> really? I gotta go Western. I want to connect a few dots. So you said last year's Laurier team yep. 
was similar to Laurier's team in 2015. Yeah. What happened in 2016? He won the Yates Cup. He won the Yates <laughs> Cup. So are you predicting? Nah, nah, nah. Are, are you predicting Laurier's going to win the Yates Cup in 2023? I, I got faith in my university for sure. Yeah. And obviously I want nothing but the best for them. So I'm, I'm hoping that that's their goal as well too. So obviously this is a financial based interview. So I got to tie the bow when it comes to finances, bring us home. What's one piece of advice you'd give to all young Canadian athletes when it comes to financial matters? Take it one day at a time and don't let your financial step, like don't let your financial goals like set you back. Or if you're having a hard time with financial, don't let that set you back from your ultimate goal. Like let your passion drive you without having to worry about any of the financial part because and at the end of the day, you take care of what you got to take care of, then you'll be in a better position in order to take care of what you got to take care of. Timing is everything, patience is everything. You're not gonna pay off a $40,000 loan in one day or in one year. Take it one step at a time. And don't let your financial situation stop you from you know, pursuing your passion. Well said. Like you said, it's a journey. It is a journey. It's a, journey. It's a long journey. Curly Innes Jr., appreciate you, bro. Thanks for sitting down with me, man. Thank you.